Hello, this is Pastor Frank from the Balsam Bible Chapel with another message on the little series that I started the new year with about the race. Um, the uh, first message of the new year was the race of 2023. And last week I spoke on uh, losing weight to run the race. And now today I want to consider the subject of leading the race. Back in the early 1980s, there was a movie, Chariots of Fire, which you are probably uh, very familiar with. Maybe you've seen it many times. It's a, a story based on, it's a true story based on two British athletes in the 1924 Olympics. One was Eric Little, who was known as a devout Scottish Christian who ran for the glory of God. And then there was Harold Abrams, um, who was an English Jew who ran to overcome prejudice. And there is one race that takes place in that movie prior to the Olympics where it is just Eric Little running in with the competitors, not, not uh, uh, er, um, Harold Abrams, just Eric Little. And soon after the starting of the race, he was pushed and into the infield and fell. And he got up and he ran with with uh, tremendous heart and he not only ran the rest of the race well but he ended up winning that race it's a it's an amazing clip but it reminds me of what jesus said in john chapter 16 verse 33 he said in the world you will have tribulation there will be knockdowns there will be times when we fall there will be times when things happen to us that that uh pull at us pull us down Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulations, afflictions, and, and so forth, pressures. But Jesus says, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So sometimes we're knocked down uh, intentionally or unintentionally. But falling down does not mean we need to stay down. Uh, we can get up. We can continue to, ra the, to run the race. We can run it with endurance. And we can finish well. Well, let me pray before I... Uh, get into the message further. I'm going to be looking at, uh, again, uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. It's kind of the foundation verses for this whole little series. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. But Heavenly Father, I thank you for, again, the opportunity to talk about your word, and I pray that your Holy Spirit would do what you want with your word in our hearts and our lives as we run this race as we run it with endurance, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, I pray in his name. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12, beginning at verse 1, it says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. In verse 1, it begins, therefore, which ties it back to what has come before, and that is chapter 11. Uh, it speaks about a cloud of witnesses in verse 1. The New Living Translation translates it like this. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip away or strip off every weight with, that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. The sin that trips us up. And I think about that movie, Chariots of Fire, and that one particular race, and how Eric was, was tripped up. He was pushed and fell down. Well, here it talks about stripping off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. The ones mentioned in chapter 11 of Hebrews are given as people to consider, as people to ponder, as examples of faith. No, they weren't perfect examples, but they were the Holy Spirit uh, deemed them appropriate to list as examples of faith. So in chapter 11 of Hebrews, if you want to look there in verse 6, it says, Without faith it is impossible to please him, to please God. 
For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And those in, uh, that are listed here are Abel, verse 4. Um, Abel's story didn't end very well. A son of Adam and Eve, he was the first individual to die. And not just die, he was murdered. And he was murdered by his very own brother. So it's a sad ending for Abel. But the Bible says he, being dead, still speaks. The example that Abel set of faith outlived him. It lives today. And brothers and sisters, the example that you and I set outlives us. Even after we're gone, people will remember the life that we lived. It may not be large crowds that remember us. It may just be a few. But people will remember the life that we lived and the example that we set. In verse 5, Enoch is mentioned. The Bible says that Enoch pleased God. Now back in Genesis chapter 5, where we find uh, the brief story of Enoch, it says in verse 24 there of Genesis 5 that Enoch walked with God. A good character, interesting character. And then we have Noah, verse 7, and the uh, whole ark that uh, he built. And uh, you know, Noah must have been a laughing stock in his day of people. Uh, people laughing at him for building a boat when it hadn't rained, it hadn't... Uh, he, he must, his faith must have made him a laughing stock. Our faith may make us a laughing stock. People will not understand us. They will sneer, joke at us, and make jokes about us. Well, no, uh, no doubt faced that, but he was, is considered by, the, by God himself as an example of faith. And then we have Abraham, verse 8, and there's a lot of verses about Abraham. Sarah, verse 11, I like, I like this verse about Sarah. It says that she judged him faithful who had promised. She judged him faithful who had promised. What a statement of faith. You know, there are some tremendous female examples of faith, both in the Bible and in uh, secular history. Well, in verse 20, Isaac is mentioned. In verse 21, Jacob is mentioned. Last fall, I was going through Jacob's life in, on our Thursday evening Bible studies here at the chapel. And uh, Jacob did not have a bright beginning. And matter of fact, throughout most of his life, <laughs> poor guy, talk about a dysfunctional family. Man, oh man, Jacob's family was dysfunctional in, <laughs> in so many ways. And so if you think that you're part of a dysfunctional family or you know somebody that is part of a dysfunctional family, I would encourage you or I would encourage them to read over the life of Jacob in the book of Genesis. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, was he was his family dysfunctional. And yet, he's listed as one of the individuals of faith. Joseph, verse 22 of Hebrews 11. He was part of Jacob's dysfunctional family. He, he knew some hard times. He was hated by his brothers. He was sold as a slave into Egypt by his brothers. When he got into Egypt, he was uh, misrepresented. He was lied about. He was forgotten. And uh, then God changed his life around and used him in a beautiful, beautiful way. It's a, quite a contrast to today's idea of faith. Um, to, some people today think that if a person has faith and everything goes well. Well, not a whole lot went well for Joseph in his early life. Then there's Moses. Several verses about Moses in Hebrews 11. Moses' story is an amazing story. Um, Moses faced a lot of, of opposition. A lot of opposition from the very people he tried to help. But Moses ran with endurance, the race that God set before him. He endured the complaining and the, 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 uh, <laughs> the opposition, big opposition of the people he faced. He, he endured. He ran the race with endurance. And there's a key to Moses' endurance and all that he faced. And I want to point this out. In Hebrews 11, verse 27, the Bible says, By faith he, Moses, forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king for, and here's the key statement, he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Let me repeat that. He endured as seeing him who is invisible. 
Now the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, looking unto Jesus. Now Jesus has been seen. We just celebrated the Christmas story and, uh, of his birth, remembering his birth. There was his, the whole story of the Gospels with his disciples and with others. Uh, people, uh, Jesus was seen, but we haven't seen him yet. The Bible promises that one day we will see him, and oh, what a day that will be. We have not seen him yet. And so like Moses, we endure as seeing him, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is invisible. Well, in Hebrews 11.31, Rahab is mentioned, another wonderful lady. In verse 32, there's Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and David and Samuel and the prophets. That would be uh, people like Elijah and Elisha and Isaiah and Jeremiah and so forth. And then in verse 34 through 38, we uh, are introduced to others with no names uh, given. Some of them we can figure out, others we can't. But um, let me begin in verse 33. It says, Who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, of course, that fits Daniel. Quenched the fire, or excuse me, quenched the violence of fire. That would, that would uh, suggest Daniel's three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness, were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again. In the story, I believe, of Elisha's story, there is that woman whose son is uh, restored to her. So women received their dead, raised to life. Again, others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trials of mockings and scourgings, yes, and of chains and imprisonments. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were tempted were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and dens and caves of the earth. The New Living Translation puts, makes, uh, puts a statement in verse 38 like this. They were too good for this world. I love that. These people who suffered so much were too good for this world, wandering over deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. These are examples of faith. Some had it easy. Some had it extremely hard. But they are the witnesses that chapter 12, verse 1, talks about. And I have been blessed over my lifetime, over my Christ, over my life, my Christian life, my walk with, him, walk with the Lord, my, my, the running of my race, I've been blessed with examples of faith. People who ran with endurance, the race that was set before them. People that I knew personally. Uh, a, a man who, uh, well-to-do, well-to-do man. But all the love of Jesus radiated from him. Rich man with the radiance of Christ. Radiating from him. And then there's another individual sitting in a recliner, shaking with Parkinson's. But from his face and his voice, his life, shone the light of Jesus so beautifully. I'm thankful for those people. I'm thankful for them. People who showed me what it looks like to run with endurance, the race that God has set before me. People who have shown me what it looks like to be an individual looking unto Jesus. So there's some people I knew personally, some people I've only known of. I haven't known them personally, but I would like to. Uh, I look forward to the day when I will. Uh, for instance, there's uh, Johnny Erickson Tata. Now, if the Bible were being written today, she's a gal that could be put into Hebrews chapter 11. What a woman of faith. And yet her life is so very hard. Uh, so I'm thankful for, for them. People who have run with endurance. The race that God has set before them looking unto Jesus. I think of an individual that would, uh, you know, just stare. Now, if we were together in a room and I just, I just started staring at something, you know, off. And just did that. 
pretty soon you might, at least I would, if I were in a room with somebody who was doing that, I would be thinking, what are they looking at? I would try to see what they're seeing. Looking unto Jesus. Being so taken up with Jesus. As people look at us and they see our, our focus, our gaze, that they would be drawn to him as well. In a race, who do I want to be like? Well, I've titled this message, Leading the Race. Who do I want to be like? I go back to that, thinking about that race, uh, Chariots of Fire, where Eric Little is knocked off the track, falls down. <laughs> if I'm running in a race, I don't want to be like the guy that uh, is knocked down back there, fall down, fell down. I don't want to be like the guy who gets sidetracked. and Instead of running the course, he's sees something interesting over here that he runs over to check that out or runs over here to, to talk to one of the, the bystanders, the, the spectators. I don't want to be like the person who is lagging behind. And if you, in this race with Eric Little, if you were able to interview every one of the runners as they were running that race after Eric Little got knocked down, none of them probably wanted to be like the guy that was had fallen back there. But all of them would have wanted to be like the guy that just passed him. <laughs> the guy that was knocked down, but there he goes. They would have wanted to be like him. I would want to be like him. Setting an example of what it is to run with endurance, the race that God has set before us, so that when people look at us, I want to be like him. I want to be like her. What God intends for his people couldn't be more clear. It could not be more clear. God wants us to consider those who have gone before us in this race. The Bible talks there about that great cloud of witnesses. God wants us to run our own race with endurance, looking unto Jesus. That's what he wants. God wants us to be an example to others of a man or a woman who runs well, who runs the race of life, the, this, this, this race that God has set before them, runs it well with their eyes upon Jesus, with endurance. The Apostle Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, he says, Be an example to the believers. Be an example in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. As I think about this, I think there are three ways that we can run the race, that we can live this Christian life. <laughs> we can live as a good example. So that when people see us or hear of us, it's like, I want to be like him. I want to be like her. And, and I am so thankful that God has put individuals into my life. And especially when I was a young Christian, I want to be like him. I want to know the Bible like him. I want to have the faith that he has. I want to have a prayer life like he has. I want to see things in the world through the eyes of, of, of God like they do. We can run this race, live this Christian life as a good example. Or we can live it as a bad example. I don't want to be like him. He claims to be a Christian and he's living like that. I don't want to be like that. We can live it as a bad example. Or <laughs> we can live it as no example. We don't draw any attention to our life as a Christian. But you know, in reality, no example is a bad example. The reward that we look for at the end of the race, the reward of the crown, that the Bible talks about, the, the reward of hearing the words, well done, good and faithful servant. The reward that we look for at the end of the race is not just for ending the race. It's not just because we die. <laughs> okay, Frank died. Time for the crown or time for the reward. No, the reward is given for those who run well. Run with endurance. Run with their eyes upon Jesus. The words are well done. Not just, oh, you finished. 
No, but well done, good and faithful servant. The reward we look for at the end of the race is for those who have set an example along the way so that others can follow as they run their own race. I close with a song that uh, is not the favorite of mine, but it, it's a favorite of mine. It's a song that I refer to many times because I want it to be true of my life. It's the song, Find Us Faithful. It's a song that, that takes this passage from Hebrews chapter 12, 1 and 2, and, and uh, puts it into, into song. It goes like this. We're pilgrims on the journey of, a, of the narrow road. And those who've gone before us line the way, cheering on the faithful, encouraging the weary, their lives a stirring testament to God's sustaining grace. Now notice this next part and how it relates to Hebrews 12 verses 1 and 2. The song goes, surrounded by so great a uh, cloud of witnesses. Surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us run the race, not only for the prize, but as those who've gone before us, let us leave to those behind us the heritage of faithfulness passed on through godly lines. O oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. May the fire of our devotion light their way. May the footprints that we leave lead them to believe and the lives we live inspire them to obey. O oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. After all our hopes and dreams have come and gone, and our children sift through all we've left behind, may the clues that they discover and the memories they uncover become the light that leads them to the road we each must find. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. May the fire of our devotion light their way. May the footprints that we leave lead them to believe, and the lives we live inspire them to obey. O oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. Brothers and sisters, you might feel like you have been knocked down right now, like you have been pushed down. Something has caused you to fall, whether it's you have fallen in with sin or, or it's just something else. It's really drug you down. Don't give up. Get up. Look at that race, if you, if you find it on, on YouTube, that race in Chariots of Fire where Eric Little is knocked down. It's like the hope is gone. But being knocked down, he doesn't stay down. He got up and he not only ran well, but he won the race. Brothers and sisters, let us run. No matter where we find ourselves right now, let us get up, let us run with endurance, looking unto Jesus, so that when we come to the end of our race, we would hear him say to us, Well done, you good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you for those who have gone before us, who have lined and lighted the way, their lives an example, people in Scripture, people in our own personal lives, Thank you for those examples. And Father, help us to see the importance of us being an example to those who are looking at our lives and coming behind us. That we would run well. That we would finish well. For your glory and your honor, for our joy, and for the help of those who are observing our lives. They're observing how we run this race. May it be to your glory, to our joy, and to their eternal blessing. And I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord bless you, brothers and sisters, as you run with endurance the race that God has set before you. Lord bless you.